Everyone knows you need a pitch deck if you're going to try to get investment from angels or VCs, but why do you need two of them? Hi, welcome to Feel the Boot. I'm Lance, and today I want to talk about why you need to have two different pitch decks. The problem is, when you go to pitch your company, ideally you'll be doing so in front of your audience, but you don't always get to. Sometimes you have to have a deck that they're going to read on their own, that you're going to send by email or post to a portal, and that requires a different kind of deck. So if you're presenting in person, your deck, your pitch deck, should be optimized to keep the focus on you, the presenter. You want the audience looking at you, listening to, he, to your words. And the deck should just be there to support you. The images, the numbers, the facts, the text, all of that needs to be in support of the words you're saying. Because the last thing you want is your audience getting distracted and reading a bunch of text over your shoulder while you're talking, right? They're not listening to you anymore. They've tuned out for that moment. And you want your passion, your excitement, and your energy to be part and parcel of this presentation. And so my recommendation for live presentation decks is to strip out all the unnecessary text. Think about Steve Jobs' keynotes. They're mostly simple images, a couple of numbers, simple graphs, uh, and a picture of the product itself. Right? They're never busy. They're, you're never sitting there reading a paragraph of text over his shoulder. It's always just enough to be a placeholder, to be a reminder, to be a supporter of the message that he's conveying personally through his voice. You see that over and over with good presenters. However, that deck is going to be a failure if you send it to someone to read on their own because there's no context, right? Here's a black slide with a number on it. Well, in your presentation, you're talking about the size of the market or the total addressable market or some other kind of figure that's important. Since you're telling them that's what you're talking about, all you need to do is have that number on the screen. But if you're emailing this to someone and you're not there and they just need to read the deck, then they're going to be, what is this number? How, how does this fit in? What's the context? I don't get what's going on. So with a read alone deck, you in fact need to have all the context there. The deck needs to deliver the information and the passage, passion and the excitement all without you being able to say a word, right? It's got to stand on its own. And so in this case, they tend to be much more text rich. You need to fully explain all the information that you would normally deliver verbally so that they're able to follow the entire message. Now, I would generally recommend that you not simply take the existing slides from your live presentation deck and add a bunch of text, or vice versa, take your text-heavy deck and strip out text. You'll probably need to do some rearrangement. It may take more slides or less slides in one deck or the other. So go ahead and treat each one as an independent presentation as you build it and put it together. At the same time, you want to make sure that you do have a consistent visual vocabulary, a similar color scheme, a similar look and feel. Probably you will want to reuse most of the same graphics, most of the same fonts. The same terms and phrases should exist in both. So if they read the deck online and they see you present it, it should feel like a continuum. It's of a same piece. The same information is presented in roughly the same order. Now, of course, with the Leave Behind deck, you can often go into much more detail because often your in-person pitch will be limited to 15 minutes, 10, 5, I've seen 3. Right? You may be extremely limited in time in person, whereas with a Leave Behind deck, you often have a lot more room to allow your story to spread its wings. But still, it is important to keep it very concise. The purpose of the pitch deck, after all, is just to set the hook. You're not trying to explain the entire business. You are trying to get a follow-up meeting and move into due diligence. You want the investor to say, yeah, this sounds like the kind of thing I'd like to invest in. This is an opportunity I'd like to get in on, assuming everything you say is true, and assuming when I dig into all of the claims that you're making, they, they seem to make sense. I buy your story about the market. I buy all of these assumptions that you're making. But fundamentally, that sounds like a good deal to me. 
That's what you're trying to get out of this. But the two decks really can't substitute for each other. If you're trying to use a leave behind deck, a read alone deck live, it's going to distract your audience. There's going to be way too much text. They're going to be reading over your shoulders. And if you use the live deck in an offline context, there's going to be no context and they're going to be confused. And so sometimes I'll see people saying, well, what I'll do is I'll try to get a balanced deck that'll work in either place. The problem is it really isn't optimized for either environment, right? It isn't the ideal delivery deck and it isn't the ideal reading deck. So you've now disadvantaged yourself. You could have done better. You could have had a better live pitch and you could have had a better written pitch. And while this might be adequate, we're talking a very competitive space here. Adequate really doesn't cut it. You want to make sure that you're delivering the best possible pitch you can to give yourself the best chance of getting that investment because most investment pitches don't succeed. It's a very difficult process to get anyone interested in most companies. And putting your best foot forward is the very least you can do to give yourself a real chance of getting the investment you need. But if you take my advice, with these two decks in hand, you'll be in a great position to handle whatever kind of situation comes up, whether you're uploading the deck to a portal or you're presenting in front of an angel group or at an investor meeting or at some large summit, you're always ready to go. Now, I'd love to see it if you have two versions of your deck optimized for online and you know read alone, please, if you're willing to, post a link. I'd love to see some examples down in the comments so that other people can learn from them and start a discussion around them. I'm fascinated to see the different kinds of ways that entrepreneurs communicate about their businesses. So good luck with your pitch and good luck with your business. Till next time, ciao. Thanks for listening to this episode of Feel the Boot. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button. And if you want to hear more of this kind of content, Click the subscribe and then hit the bell to be notified when new content is uploaded. I'll be uploading new videos and blogs every other week. And please go down to the comments and let me know what other kind of content or questions you'd like me to address in future videos. Thanks.